Hello, welcome to the next video in my AP Physics series. Today we're going to go over five common kinematics mistakes and how to avoid them. So the first common error is mixing up points in time. If we look at this example problem, we're being asked to solve for several things. We need to solve for the height at the peak, the time to hit the wall, and the speed at the wall. If we start with part A, and we just call this V initial and V Y final at these two spots, but once we get to part B, we have to redefine our final to be here so we can solve for the time to hit the wall. Now this works okay, but it tends to get confusing because you have to keep redefining your initial and final from one section of the FRQ to the next, which makes you uh, more prone to making errors and it also makes your work more difficult to follow. So what I prefer to do instead is label each point in time with a number. So this is time zero, this is time one, and this is time two. Now here, I would reference this velocity y as vy0, and I would call this one, which is, um, there's no velocity y, but I would call this vy1, and I would call this one vy2. So instead of using initial and final, I have unique variable names for each point in time, which just makes it easier to keep track of. The second common error is forgetting which direction is positive. In this case, we're being asked to solve for the velocity of the projectile after it reaches the peak, so on its way down. We can use our vy1 squared is equal to vy initial squared uh, plus 2a delta y. But for both a and delta y, we have to be really mindful of which direction is positive. So since we end higher than we start, our delta y will be positive. But since gravity is down and our positive is up, our gravity will, be, or our acceleration will be negative. So this will be vy1 squared is equal to vy initial squared minus 2 times gravity times positive 20. And then we can solve this for our vy and then solve that for our speed. So our third common error is picking the wrong answer. We're going to continue using the example from the previous problem where we're solving for the velocity at um, height equals 20 after the peak, and we're solving in magnitude angle notation. So again, we can start with this uh, vy1 squared equation, and this uses the negative g. But then when we isolate vy1, we have a plus or minus square root. And we have two options here. Do we use the positive vy or do we use the negative one? And in this case, since it's after the peak, our vy will be downwards. We know that we're going to need to pick the negative version of vy1. And then when we're solving this for a uh, velocity that's tangent to the curve, then we can just use vx, vx, our vy, which is negative. And then we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for velocity 1. And we can solve for theta using arctan, vy over vx. So whenever you're using this equation, you'll always have two answers, a positive and negative, and you'll have to pick the right one. Our fourth common error has to do with motion graphs. Now with motion graphs, um, relating one to the next can be difficult, but you just have to remember the order of zero to constant to linear to quadratic. And this goes from acceleration to velocity to position. So if your uh, acceleration is zero, then your velocity will be constant and your position will be linear. Or if your acceleration is constant, then your velocity will be linear and your position will be quadratic. Now we can take a look at an example problem. So here we need to fill in our position versus time graph based on the given velocity versus time graph. So if our velocity is positive and constant, then that means our position will be positive linear. So we can draw a line for the first segment. And then now our velocity is negative linear, negative linear, which means that our position will be concave down quadratic. Now it might be tempting to draw your concave down quadratic as something like this, but something to remember is that if your velocity is continuous, even though there's kind of a, an elbow here, you can't put an elbow in your, in your position graph. This has to be uh, a smooth, smooth graph. Now the third segment is zero velocity. Zero velocity means a constant position. So constant position. And then now we have another negative linear 
So this will be another downwards parabola. And then we have an upwards linear. So this will be a upwards or concave up parabola. And in this case, we will end above zero because our total area under the positive section of our velocity versus time graph is more than the area under the negative section of our velocity versus time graph. So just to double check, we know we're going to end up above where we started. Now the fifth common error has to do with the quadratic formula. Whenever you need to solve for time, the most natural way to do it is to use this kinematics equation where your change in y is your initial y position times time minus one half gravity times squared. And you can solve this using the quadratic formula. But I, I tend to run into problems when I try to use the quadratic formula just because when I have to type in numbers into my calculator, typing in this is really prone to making errors. So you can lose points for getting the wrong answer even if you did all the actual hard work correct. So what I do just to avoid the quadratic formula altogether is instead of using this quadratic, or sorry, this kinematics equation, I use this one. And I solve for vy first, uh, making sure to pick the correct solution using the previous tip. And then I can plug in the velocity y into this equation using the initial velocity y and gravity to solve for time. And this initially seems like it would be a more convoluted way of solving for time because you're using two equations. But the benefit of it is that it avoids quadra the quadratic formula. And it's common for FRQs to also ask for the velocity y at the end anyway. So even though you're spending a little bit of extra effort using a second equation, sometimes you're being asked for this anyway, so you would have had to use these equations regardless. So you can actually save yourself time and effort by avoiding the quadratic formula and using this method instead. If you really prefer to use the quadratic formula or if your calculator has a shortcut, then you can ignore this tip altogether. But for me personally, I prefer to use this second method just to avoid having to type this into my calculator. That's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. I will see you all next time. Bye.